Uh, welcome everyone. So this is our 105th live stream geometry. Um, we have two people here with us so far, and today I will take problems from the same journal as last time, uh, Geometry Mathly. Um, so these are problems in the years 2011 and 2012, um, and I believe the journal is from Vietnam. So if you want to join us in the future, feel free to email me at mgreenv801 at gmail.com. Uh, it's in the description of my video, and we meet every Sunday at 8 a.m. U.S. Central Time. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, so uh, here is the first problem. So we have a triangle ABC inscribed in a circle O, and the tangents at B and C uh, meet at T. It's kind of like a semedium configuration. Oh, there's tangents. And they need a T. M and N are on the rays B, T, and C, T. So let me try to make a picture where B, T, and C, T are bigger than B, C. Um, so maybe something like that. Just to make it easier to see. Okay. And let's draw M and N. Hmm. Let me try to make it a little bit farther. I think that looks better. Yeah. Okay. So we have M and N. So BM equals BC equals CN. I'm going to hide the circles. All right, obviously MN is parallel to BC, so I'll just draw that. Um, the, sorry, the line through M and N. So, okay, so I could draw that whole line. Um, and that's basically the radical axis of T, the point circle T and the circle through ABC, this line MN. Um, it intersects CA and AB at E and F. Well, MNN. I'm not midpoints. Oh, I could just reflect. Or you're saying, yeah, V is. No, like... it's not the radical axis. Oh, it's not the radical axis. Okay. Yeah, I mean, not midpoints. Oh. Um, oh, you're right. Yeah, they're not midpoints. That's my bad. <laughs> Good point. Um, so this is E, and this is F. And BE meets uh, CT at P, and CF meets BT at Q. Uh, and we want to show that AP equals AQ. Okay, so this is P, this is Q. All right, so I think we have everything. Just hide a few things and we will be ready to go. Hide that, hide that. Get this and this. All right. So, yeah, M and N are not the midpoints like you mentioned. Or 
right? So yeah, somehow we have to use BM equals BC and CM equals BC. That's an important part of this configuration. Just check that the problem is true. Yes. Uh, hmm. That doesn't look true. So maybe I didn't draw something right. Let's see. Where did I go wrong? Oh, use the intersection of ECT. Oh, it's, it's true. Okay. You draw correct. Um, let's see. BE meets CT at P, and CF intersects BT at Q. Um, no, I think M is not the correct point here. Okay. Um, BM should equal BC. Oh, did I switch? Yes. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It should be these points down here. I drew it wrong. Okay, I'll have to go back a little bit. That's my bad. Okay, so it's really these points down here. We got confused. Hey, Sriyansh, thanks for joining. Hey, Pascal. Um, so this, uh, this should be M. And this should be M. Then I would expect that it's true. Um, let me see if I can make them a little farther from T. It's not going to be a perfect diagram, but I think that looks good enough. Um, hide, hide. Yeah, that was a good catch. Um, So we draw and then and yep, this and this. Okay. It almost looks like this is isosceles, but I don't think I doubt it is. Um so See what we call those. Um, this is E, this is F. And then now we do what we did before. We draw P and Q. So this is P, and this is Q, if I did everything right. P, this is Q, and let's check that AP equals AQ. Yes, now it's true. All right, hide this, hide this, hide that, hide this, and this, and this. Don't think this is I. Hmm, that definitely looks isosceles. I'll think about this. Is that just a coincidence? Does it really pass? Okay, it's not really isosceles. Yeah. All right. MNP is isosceles, of course, but. Draw that circle. The key is using the fact that BC equals BM 
y rocía. Angle B and C is 90 minus A over 2. And B, same with B and C. Those are both 90 minus A over 2. Um, what happens if we draw the angle bisector? So we know this is cyclic right here. Um, I don't know how much that helps. But I wonder is this circle, um, I draw the angle bisector. I draw the perpendicular. Is, is this obviously, um, like, is this circle obviously symmetric about the angle bisector? Um, maybe it's obvious, I don't know. Oh, well, the re well, it's an isosceles trapezoid, so it has to be cyclic. Um, but I wonder, is it obvious that, I think there's, there's probably not an explanation that's not that hard. But yeah, I think this circle is symmetric about the single bisector. I guess BC, MN is the circle in the fact five. It passes through BC in center and back center. Okay. Can so, you check that? Yeah. Um, it looks like it. It's true. Um, yeah, is is that obvious? That the circle is like that? It's probably it's probably an easy angle chase. Like we first draw this circle and then we just have to calculate angle B and C. Like, yeah, it's just an angle chase um, because we know angle B, I'll call this I. Yeah, B I is angle by sector of TBC. Yeah. So yeah, no, we, BK. these are all on, on the same circle by an angle chase. Okay, so that tells us a lot about that circle.
try this. So if BM equals BC, um, I wonder if that can help to sort of draw the in center of this triangle. Can you draw the intersection of QE and PF? Um, PF, QE and PF? Yeah. I'm trying to draw, yeah, it's called linearity. Interesting. Because if we prove that uh, by isogonal lemma, isogonal line lemma, AP and AQ are isogonal. If you prove that then by the isogonal line lemma, you can do what? Uh, we can prove that AQ and AP are isogonal with respect to angle BAC. Okay, so you're saying they're isogonal. Did not realize that. Interesting. And it almost looks like Desargues theorem. So, like, if we have triangles BQF and CPE, what do we get if we use the SARGs? Um, oh, but they're not perspective. That's the thing. Uh, BPF and CQE. Um, doesn't work either. I think it would be if we draw these two points, EFJ and CLE. Uh, yeah, we could try using the SARGs on BFJ and CLE. Um, Oh, so it's equivalent to showing JL is parallel to both BC and EF. Interesting. Then that would prove it by Desargues. So 
yeah, if we can show BJ equals CL or TJ equals TL, that would solve it. That would show their isogonal. Maybe we can use Menelaus somehow. So we have FM over FE times EP over PB times EJ over JM equals one. Basically, we want to show BM, BJ over JM is CL over LN. So we could make like a symmetric argument the other way. We could, we use um, Menelaus the other way. Uh, we have EN over EF um, times Oh, I think I need to draw this point if I do that. So by Chavez's theorem, AO passes through the midpoint of EF. Um, let me call this something else. Uh, X. But we have FM over FE. Well, actually, we want point J. FM over FE times EP over PB times BQ over QM equals 1. And then we have uh, FN. Oh, actually, we don't need point X. We have FN over F or EN over EF times FQ over QC and CL over LN equals one. So I think it reduces to showing that like FM over NE is like FQ over QC divided by EP or PB or something like that. Um, Oh, and that's obvious. Okay. All right. So, so I think, I think I can prove, I think I can prove that A, H, and T are collinear. And so I think we can prove that AP and AQ are hexagonal. What's the main idea of the proof? Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the main idea of the proof is we want first. First, we want to show that JL is parallel to both BC and EF, and once we do that, we could use yes, from the from the from Desargs, Yeah. So the way I try to show JL is parallel. That's the same as showing that BJ over JM is CL over LN. Um, and uh, we can use uh, Menelaus. So to find BJ over JM. Like we have FM over FE times EP over PB um, times BJ over JM equals one. So we could use that. Um, and then when we have EP over PB, that's the same as EN over BC. So we'd have like EN over BC and then we'd have like FM over BC. So when you divide those two, you get like FM over EN. So that proves that, that 
that proves that bj over jm equals cl over ln. And so that shows it's parallel. Maybe we don't even need Menelaus. Maybe we could just use similar triangles, actually. Um, I'm not sure. AP and AQ are isogonal. And we just have to show that they're equal. So, so that's also the same as trying to like KP equals KQ or IP equals IQ. Yeah, we're very close. Um, I wonder if it's just like the law of signs or something can finish it. So we know G and C are symmetric across the uh, angle bisector. So like CQ and GP should be symmetric. Hey, Shreya, thanks for joining us. But yeah, if we can show G, GP and CQ are like symmetric, that would solve it. Or BQ, um, like if we can show those concur, that would also solve it. So yeah, we're very, very close. At least it feels like it.
So we have sine ABQ over AQ equals sine BAQ over BQ. Um, and uh, sine ABQ is the same as sine FBQ. So it's like we want to show sine FBQ over BQ equals sine uh, C. PCE or CP or something like that. Um, is BC equal QM? Uh, BC is it equal to, uh, uh, what did you say, QM? BC equal QM. How oh, does PC equal QM? Uh, let's see. Is... Yes. Oh, okay. Then you can finish because the power of P and Q with respect to BIC is equal. Okay. Interesting. So power of P and Q with respect to this circle is the same, and K is the center, so QK equals PQ. Okay, so we just have to prove that we have to prove that PC equals QM. Right? Yes. So PC over PN is BC over EN. And QB over QM is, is BC over FM. Um, yeah, I wonder if we can use that somehow. So yeah, we want to show that so we can prove it. Fm times n uh, n e equals to bc squared. Yes, we, we can prove it from two sines sinus lemma. First one is fm over sin c equals to bm over sin b sine b. Okay. Second one is the symmetric one. Okay, so fm. Like we're showing FM times EN is BC squared. That's what you're saying, yeah. right? It is enough to prove that, right? Yes. To prove it, we write FM over sine C equals to BM over sine B. Okay. It is sine's theorem on triangle BFM. BFM. Okay. Cause, okay, because this angle is sine C. I see what you're saying. And then that should solve it. Interesting. All right. So we had to use the isogonal line lemma, right? Because so we still have to write the like I wonder if there's a way to shorten the proof, but um actually we don't did we need the whole isogonal line lemma or we could just no, we need it. We, we do need it. it. Because if we could show that BQ over QM is like, like once we know that QM equals PC, then P and Q have the same. Oh, but we have to show that because then we know that PK equals QK, but we have to show that they are symmetric across angle bisectors. So we do need it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very interesting. So there's a lot that went on here. So um, let I be the in center triangle ABC. Uh, draw the circle um, BIC. 
Um, so we're going to show that passes through MNN. Um, so angle BMC equals angle BCM. Which, um, well, well, BMC, it's just 90 minus A. I'll just say this. BMC is 90 minus A over 2. Which is um, 180 minus BIC. Well, the proof is not 100% done. It's not because that one. We, yeah, it's not 100% done because we need to know that angle AKP and angle AKQ are both obtuse. So we used one angle and two lengths, but these lengths doesn't belong to the angle. I see what you're saying. I think this can be done, but we need to say it properly. Yeah. We have to show they're both obtuse. Um, A good point. So if one was acute and the other was obtuse, um I wonder how the isogonal line lemma. Let's think about that. I'm just curious. This almost looks. I just guessed that this would be cyclic, and it was. Maybe if we can show this is cyclic, then that would prove uh, that it's the case. So, okay. KQPT. Because, yeah, if KQ equals KP, oh, and K lies on the angle bisector of this. So, yeah, we do know that this is cyclic right here um, once we've proven that KQ equals KP. And if we know that this is cyclic, can we use that to show that they're both obtuse? Actually, we just need to prove that Q, K, and P are not uh, collinear because we know that sine AQQ equals to sine AKP. Oh, yeah. So if they are not collinear, we are done. And they are not because we know that circle. Okay, so that, that proves it. All right. Um, so we have this. So... Um... So this this implies that M and N both lie on a circle BIC. All right. And okay. So I'll say label J and L is shown. Then um, we have BJ over JM. So, so, so I guess I'll use Menelaus. I don't even know if Menelaus is necessary, but um, we have by Menelaus um, FM over ME times um, or 
or sorry, Fn over Ne, or, or Fn over, give me just a second. No, Fm over Fe times Ep, okay, we want JNL. Fm over Fe times Ep or Pb. times bj over jm equals 1. And then we also have B, bq over qm equals bc, or, or, or I'll say ep over pb right here is equal to en over bc. Um, so by doing a similar expression on the other side, uh, we get bj over jm equals cl over ln. Um, fm over fe, sorry. Combining the above, and doing the same on the other side, now we find that uh, EJ over JM equals CL over LN. And that means that BJ is equal to CL, and that means that JL is parallel C is parallel to the F. Okay. So I'm going to make room here. And then by Dessards on BJF and CLE. Um, A, H, and T are collinear. Actually, I think it's really like this, but it doesn't matter. What we know sine A, Q, K equals sine A, P, K. Oh, I see what you're saying. All right. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, so that's how we finish it. Okay, so A, H, and T are collinear. So then we use the isogonal line lemma on A, B. Um, what is it again? A, B, A, J, A, L, A, C. Uh, isogonal line lemma on A, F, A, Q, A, P, A, E. A, F, A, Q, A, P, A, E. Or I was thinking A, A, B, A, Q, A, P, A, C, right? Or while, oh, no, because then that would, oh, I think you were thinking of it different than me. I was thinking A, B, A, Q, A, P, A, C, 
And then BQ. Yeah, I thought the same thing. Okay. I said wrong. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but maybe we could do AF, AQ, APAE, because those two meet at that point. Yeah, and... actually, wait a minute. What I thought was using FQPE, it will give H and the intersection of BE and CF. So we know that that intersection and A passes through the midpoint of BC and the other one is C median line, so they are isogonal. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think both work. Um, yeah, both give the same result. Um, I'm going to rename this um, Z. Um, so, so first we'll say AZ by Cheva's theorem on AFE. AZ passes through the midpoint of BC. Um, and yeah, so I'll do it in just a second. Um, explain that. So by Cheva's theorem on final AFB, um, we have AZ passes through the midpoints of EF and BC. And then by the isogonal line lemma on um, a B A Q A P A C. Um, then think about that. Um, now I'm a little confused. Um, then we have angle BAQ equals CAP. All right. Um, so e, uh, sorry, this should be E N over B C. Okay, and yeah, this this right here is just similar triangles, right? Uh, P B C is similar to E P N. Um. Okay, and uh, once we know this, um, then we can like try to use the law of sines to show that fm times en is bc squared. Um, so um, sine of fm over fm is equal to um, so this is equal to angle B is equal to sine B over BM. BM. Um, so we have, I'll say sine A, this is FBM, no, FBM is angle C. So uh, similarly, sine of B over EN is equal to sine C over, wait, over 
or CM? Wait, where did I get BC in the picture? So when I combine these two, I'm supposed to get that FM times EN equals BC squared. Um, so if I, I guess if I, if I multiply them, because BM times CN, okay. So this is equals sine B over BC. And so we're using that fact again. So then combining the above, uh, we have FM times EN equals BC squared. And that implies that um, BJ over J or BQ over QM equals is equal to NP over PC. Or, or I'll say BQ times QM. Well, I, I think at, at first it's like this. So BQ equals NP and QM equals PC. And that implies that, basically means that BQ times QM equals NP times PC. And that means that uh, PK equals QK. And then here's that one extra step. Um, so we have to use, before we can say P equals AQ, um, we can say that because if, um, because otherwise P, Q, and K would be collinear, right? Or is that true? Otherwise P, Q, and K would be collinear? Or otherwise, A, P, Q, K would be cyclic? Yeah, otherwise, they will be, would be cyclic. A, Q, K, P. OK, I'll just write a note here, and then we can move on to the next problem. Otherwise, A, Q, K, P would be cyclic. And if that was cyclic, um, then. Then we'd have two circles with three intersections because this is also cyclic. Okay, interesting. All right, this is a cool proof. So thanks a lot. And I will move on to the next one. We used the Sarg's theorem, we used the isogonal line lemma, we used Menelaus. Very cool. Okay, so it's 9.55, so we're about a third of the way through. Um, this problem involves a lot of Euler lines. So we have a cyclic quadrilateral and its diagonals intersected E. Okay. And then we reflect E over the midpoints of each side. Let's draw our midpoints. So, I mean, basically we get parallelograms, right? Um, so I'll just draw the parallelograms that way. 
identify. So yeah, I think this this should be like a line. I mean, these are basically the parallels to A, C, and B, B, right? It's it's like we have a we have a homophony of this quadrilateral um, with ratio two, and we just got that these are all parallel. Okay. All right. Uh, hey, Nguyen, thanks for joining. Uh, we just had a really awesome problem, so I'm, I'm sorry you missed it, but this one looks cool too. Um, so this is M, N, and then P and Q. We want to show the Euler lines of MAB, NBC. Uh, did they did they mix these up? I think they probably mean they probably mean Q. Wait, M and P Q. Maybe I'm I got confused. Oh no, that's right. BC, PCD, and QDA. Okay. So yeah, this this itself is the parallelogram, right? These two are parallel to this diagonal. These two are parallel to this diagonal, and it's like homothetic to this about E. Okay, so how, what's the right way to think about this? We have all so if we show three are concurrent, obviously the fourth one has to be. Um, uh, one sec, guys, I'll be right back. All right, thanks for waiting. Let's see. So I can try drawing the centroids of these. Um, let me try that. So I think triangle center one is the centroid, right? I 
I think that might be easier than the ortho center. I'm not sure. Well, these other lines can be obtained by uh, performing an homotety with ratio to with center E. So uh, Euler line of ECD goes to Euler line of PCD with ratio to okay. and Euler lines of ECD, ECB, EAB, EAD are concurrent. This is a well-known theorem, but it's hard to prove. Okay. Um, so if you so um, if you use that well-known fact, does that solve the problem, or there's still another step? Yeah, if we use the theorem, we can perform a homotopy with center E with ratio two to prove this theorem. Uh, to prove this problem. Okay. So so you're saying the Euler line of ECD is 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 the same as is the Euler line of PCD but with the homophony of ratio two? Yeah. Let's think about that. So okay, so the center of this circle um is so is that obvious that that's true? Uh, I can prove it if you draw. Can you draw the orthocenter and circumcenter of ECD and CDP? Okay. Um, let, let me let me delete the hide the others just to make it easier. Okay, so I'll draw the ortho center of ECD. And then the ortho center of PCD. The theorem's name is Witt's theorem. Uh, what, what, what theorem? Vita's theorem. Oh, by yeah. named after Kodas Vitas. Yeah. All right. Interesting. So who is that guy? I don't know him. I've seen him post a lot on uh, art of problem solving and other stuff. Um, I think he's from Greece. So okay, so we have line uh, LS, and then we have line RO. And yeah, R is gonna lie, okay, so these are, this is like a parallelogram. Interesting. They intersect ER with LC, LS. Sorry. Yeah. I think I kind of see how this works because Basically, but yeah, I'll do it. But basically, it like it takes the midpoint of this, the midpoint of this. So yeah. Um, so RT equals to OL mm -hmm. because of parallelogram and OL equals to ER. It's a well-known fact. Uh, because OL OG is ER. half of ER. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, because the um, distance from the circumcenter to the side is, is half of the distance from the vertex to the orthocenter. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Okay, so um, all right. So I'll just write a proof quickly. Um, label label the Euler lines of ECD and PCD as shown.
let SL meet guarantee. Um, then uh, ER is equal to twice OG, which is twice GL. Um, which is 2GL, which is RT. So basically this this kind of sh this shows that a homophony of OR with ratio two. So this shows a homophony about E with ratio two takes the Euler line of um of CED to the Euler line of CPD. Then we use VDOS's theorem. Uh, the Euler lines of B, A, B, E, C, B, E, or And then that solves the problem. And I think I've seen VDOS's theorem before. And yeah, I think I've heard it was really hard how you mention it. So, her. Okay. All right, I'll just leave it like that for now because yeah, I've heard this is really hard. So I don't know if it's worth doing on this session. All right, so thanks for that. Um, it's a short one. Uh, let's try this. So this one looks like maybe not that hard, but then after I think they get harder. So you have a triangle ABC, um, orthocenter O and circumcenter H. And, ah, all right, we'll go download it. See what it looks like. Oh, wow, it's pretty hard, okay. Um, so let's, I'll just continue with the problem. A line uh, through A parallel to OH. So we have the Euler line again. Uh, sorry, there's a car beeping outside my apartment. Um, so I don't know if you guys can hear it. Um, but yeah, there's not much I can do. 
So this line meets the circle at K. You guys hear the car? Um, and then we have a line through A, par K parallel to AH. And it meets the circle at L. And then we have a line through L parallel to OA, and it meets the Euler line at E. So that's interesting. And we want to show that VCOE is cyclic. All right. So a short not that hard of a diagram, but I don't know if it's that easy. So we'll see. This, this, and this. Oops. It's interesting. Can you intersect AH with circle? Yes. Uh, also, HO with KL and EL with AK. HO with KL and EL with yeah. AK. Also, can you intersect AO with circle? Yes. So DJ is parallel to BC. And I think that looks good. So yeah, this is a parallelogram. Actually, is that, hmm, let me think about that. Yeah, that, that by definition is a parallelogram. And then AIEO is parallelogram. Um, can you let uh, OH meet uh, BC at a point? Yes. Uh, looks like Chuan is joining. Thanks for joining, Chuan. So I'll let the Euler line meet BC at a point. Yeah, can you let it be a, a little closer? Yeah. Maybe right there. Um, so we can prove that uh, D, L, and M are collinear. Oh, really? Yeah, because yeah. it's kind of, uh, they are the, the reflection, HM is the reflection of uh, DM over BC. Oh yeah, because H and B are reflections and G and L are reflections. So that makes sense. So um, to prove that uh, BCOE are cyclic, 
Uh, we can see that uh, MB times MC is equal to ML times MD. So we just need to prove that uh, DOEL is cyclic. Okay. And um, we see that angle OEI is equal to angle HOA. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because uh, AO is parallel to uh, LE and angle HOA is equal to OAK. OAK. And we have o OAK is equal to uh, ODL because K and KL is parallel to AD. So we are done. Ah, so that was very short. Okay. Oh, actually, it seems like uh, O can be any point lies on the uh, uh, perpendicular bisector of BC, not necessarily the uh, center of ABC. Interesting. So O does not have to be the center of ABC. All right, so we'll write it up, and then the next problem should be harder. Um, so let OH meet BC at M. Yeah, once you draw point M, it's it's not that hard. Um, and then, so first of all, H and D are reflections. To show that G and L are reflections, um so let me think about that so so a h is equal to g k uh which is so g k is twice the distance from o to b c um so yeah how do we show that g and l are reflections across b c i don't think it's that hard but let me think about it Maybe we can do uh, an angle chase. So we need to prove that uh, D, L, and M are collinear. Uh, so we're going to prove that angle H, D, M is equal to angle H, D, L. Mm. Yeah, I see. You can show so this H, is an isosceles H, trapezoid because you could show that this angle equals this angle right here. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is because uh, A, H, G, K is uh, a parallelogram, so that must be, must be a trapezoid. Yeah. I saw the trapezoid. So, so A, K, L, D is an isosceles trapezoid, so H, G, L, D is two. because it's parallel. Um, and so HF equals FB um, implies that M, L, and B are collinear. And so now we're going to show D, O, E, L is cyclic. So we have angle uh, O, D, L uh, is, is uh, O, A, K, which is O, E, I. So Um, and that means that the OEL is cyclic. And once we know that, um, we have MB times MC equals MD times ML.
and the E times the O. So then B, C, O, E is cyclic. All right, this one was easier. Once you, once you draw that point M, um, yeah, the whole problem kind of collapses. So let's see if we can find something harder. Um, this, um, this one looks kind of, let's try this one. So, yeah, there were a lot of harder problems within the magazine, but I, like, they had so many points that I didn't want to do them, but uh, maybe we could do them if we solve these really quickly. So, we have a circle, O, and then we draw the tangent at A. Uh, P is an arbitrary point in the plane. So P can be anywhere. And we draw the projections of P onto the three sides. Uh, D, E, and F. And D, E, and D, F, uh, we try to see where they intersect that line. So at two different points, uh, M and N. So this is M, and this is N. And then we draw the circumcircle D, E, F, and we see where it meets C, A, and C, B, C, A, and A, B at K and L. And we want to show that K, N, K, N, and M, L intersect on the circle. So that's kind of interesting. Okay. All right. So I'm going to hide a lot of things here. So it looks like we have, yes, yeah, isogonal. Like, it's probably worth drawing the isogonal conjugate of P. And we could do that this way. We could just reflect P over this circle center. So that P prime is going to be the isogonal conjugate of P. And we draw this. That's where D and DF uh, intersect that tangent line. And we want to show that KN and LM meet on this circle. So let me make the diagram look good. Let's see. Maybe something like that. So yeah, looks like it's related to isogonal conjugates.
I wonder if there's anything special about this point, KN and ML, where they meet. Is A and are A and B collinear with that? Uh, no. Is it the midpoint of BC? No. Trying to make O look a little farther. There we go. So yeah, it's not that tricky of a diagram. Doesn't seem that easy of a problem. Wait, I just O oh, L M. So yeah, we could try to calculate the angle between those two, although I'm not positive how we do it. Let's see. Is MN, it's not parallel to KL. Yeah, this looks like a good theorem. It looks like it would, you could use it in a lot of other problems maybe. I think this is just Pascal. It's just what? Pascal's theorem. Pascal's theorem. Okay. Can you intersect E and which circle? Um, the little one. Little one, yeah. K N with the circle. No, N E. N E. No, no, okay. And here, yeah, you're right. Okay. And to call it li intersect a n with another point m prime um let let f or let li intersect it at m prime actually from pascal we know that li and intersection of li and v is on a n so we are done <clears throat> i will okay. write the pascal in the chat okay so L I K E D F. Ah, uh, so, so where do we use the tangent? The fact that this line is tangent. Do we need that fact? No, actually, we just need a line passing through A. Really? Okay. So then it's, it's much simpler. So um, let NI meet the circle, let NK meet the circle at I. Okay. Let me make sure that the next problems we do are a little bit harder. Um, 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 
N A and L I intersect E B. Um, and that means that it's M, and that means that AN and LM intersect. Yeah. Okay, so we don't use that tangent fact anywhere. Let me just check that. Pretty sure that's true. Um, so this and this. Um, and we connect it to K and L. The wrong point. It will be Q. Um, oh, sorry. Q, you're right. Q, L, and R, K. And it looks like it's true. Yeah. So, yeah, however you do it. We're always going to meet on the circle. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, it's too easy. The problem is too simple. I thought it was too hard, and then it ended up being too simple. All right. So. Um, so let's. So here is Mathly. Like they have some really hard ones. Right, like, or it looks hard, right? Um, the, and then, so yeah, let me know if there's one that you see here that looks uh, interesting. So yeah, like these look kind of hard, right? I could try this one. And, and this, I think, uses what we did last time. We, we don't even need perpendicularity. Let's see. Um, yeah, do we even use... Yeah, we don't even use that D and F are the projections, right? Yeah, we just need some circle. That's kind of silly. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Like this. This one looks tricky, but we we did something with these points x, y, and z. I think on the last session, right? Um. Let's do it again. Okay. I can do this. This one. Yeah, it seems nice. All right, let me uh, start a new tab. Okay. So let's draw the inner circle. Let 
Israel TIF, 